I don't des I don't design communes, so uh, I I may have a poor idea of how it's done. But if I was going to make one, I would have along this line, I would have a second in charge who would do the goading and the nagging and pushing these people off to uh, the truck farm every morning, and I would have a spiritual leader who stayed back and did talked about spirituality, and I would make sure that the two, each, each person did that job and only that job. Uh, does it concern you that you end up, you are the person who's now doing the, the nagging and the goading? No. Neither I will do it, nor I will have a second person to do it. I hate the very idea of nagging anybody. Either he understands or the whole world is free, he can move and live with his misunderstanding, non-understanding, wherever he wants. But here we will not allow nagging, goading, no. And if you think that you can create a commune, no, I'm not suggesting. <laughs> then try. <laughs> <laughs> and you will be surprised that except failure, you will not get anything out of it. The track record on utopias is really pretty weak. That hmm? So many people have come to the United States and tried to build societies. Uh, mm -hmm. We were talking about that with one of the Rajneeshis today, one of the sannyasins. And uh, there's a history of failures. The reason is that all those societies that have come here had an average life of three years at the most. None of them succeeded. For the simple reason, first they were all fanatics of some kind or other. Secondly, they were all dreamers. not realistic. Thirdly, they all worshipped poverty and thought that poverty has something spiritual in it. These three things were the causes of all those communes' disappearance. I know the history of all those communes. I hate poverty. I don't think it has anything to do with spirituality. In fact, poverty is the source of all crime and everything disgusting that has happened to humanity. I want my people to be comfortable, to be luxurious, not poor. Secondly, I am not a dreamer and I am not thinking of an utopia. All those societies were utopians. They were thinking of creating some utopia. I am not interested in any utopia. I am thinking only of a very human, real society. Thirdly, we are not fanatics about anything. We don't have any religious fanaticism. 
we don't have any political fanaticism, we don't have in fact any ideology to be fanatic about. So all the three ingredients which have been the cause of disappearance of all the societies are absent in this commune. So I don't see there is any possibility of this commune disappearing. The only possibility is if the Oregonian government wants to make another Hiroshima, then it can disappear. But it will be a good, beautiful place. You miss a Hiroshima in America, a memorial for tourists and good income. How would you feel if there was, uh, well, uh, a minor rebellion here. For example, you've asked the uh, citizens of uh, Rajneesh to change the name of the city back. What if they don't do it? Uh, what if you start seeing signs like that within the commune of people saying, well, Bhagwan wants this, but we don't? Hmm? <laughs> this, is, this has not occurred to you. Uh, but, uh, for example, with, you have suggested to the, the people of Antelope, Rajneesh, change the name back to Antelope. <laughs> Uh, what if there's no interest in that idea? What if they put it on the ballot and it loses? The people, the, the sannyasins who live there decide, I like Rajneesh, it's going to stay that. So this sort of, uh, this is the sort of thing that could be happening, that we see hints of. They understand me. If they have any doubt, they can ask if they have any argument against me, they can place their argument. I'm ready for an open encounter with all the sannyasins who live there. In fact, because no sannyasin wants to live there, they want to live here. So I don't see that they will disagree what I have said. If they want to live here, they can't have the government of city of Rajanis. Then why not gracefully give it back to the people the city belonged? Why create unnecessary hostility? Why not uh, have those sannyasins who don't like living down in Rajneesh right now pack tonight, uh, come down here and live where they want to live? Hmm, then what about the properties that the Foundation has purchased from the Antelopians? Give them in donation? It was the uh, corporation's fault for buying it in the first place. What do they want with antelope? You've asked the question yourself. No, this is Sanyasin's corporation. Uh -huh. This is their property. The, the same people who bought that, I believe, bought that enormous man camp that's down there that's housing mm. for another 600 people? Another. The question is the people who are living there, the property is theirs too. Right now it is theirs. And we have offered that you can purchase your property and we will take our sannyasins back. Now this seems to be very illogical of you to ask me to tell people that just vacate. Why don't you go and tell the Antelopians who are only twelve and there are 100 sannyasins. This will be more rational that those 12 pack away and we are ready to purchase their properties. So they will not be losing anything. 
I, I may be being illogical, but it strikes me that probably people are more uh, important than uh, property, and those people would be a lot happier in this community. And the amount of money involved is not that great. The property is also important because the people cannot exist without the property. People are important and it happens almost in this way. For example, Jesus says, man cannot live by bread alone. It looks certainly right. Man needs some higher values to live. He cannot live by bread alone. But this sentence is not complete. Can man live without bread? Somebody should ask Jesus. I say man may live with bread alone, but man cannot live at all without bread. So the prop man is important and the property is for man. But without property, the man cannot live. But let me yet <coughs> suggest this, that there's probably nobody in Oregon who wants that land right now. And that means those If they don't the want, then we are going to remain there then all those idiots were supporting antelope people where all their sympathy has gone now. You're suggesting that Oregonians had put together the money to buy that property? Certainly, down? because if they're supporting antelope people all along their fight and they were in their favor, this is a chance to show whether their sympathy is verbal or they mean it. If they mean it, then what is the problem? Oregon is such a big state. There are so many people with millions of dollars. They can purchase, just a single person can purchase the whole property. This is a very rich commune. The argument could be made this commune could purchase that, uh, could forget this, that property and just bring the people back. And that is the answer I think Oregonians would give. I cannot forget anything. This way or that, either we will have antelope or they will have antelope. It is now for them to decide. We are ready to vacate if they purchase the properties. Otherwise, they should sell their properties and get lost. Are you prepared to make offers for the remaining property in Antelope? We are ready to purchase their properties. At the market price, we are ready to purchase. Let me ask you about accounts right now in the little time we have left. Uh, you, uh, are you confident of what the, the the books balance here and in the United States, that that money that is missing was perhaps taken out of donations? No money is missing from here. Okay. One other question, and that is, I, I heard you at the news conference, I think it was last Monday, just so I understand, and if I can, I'd like you, if you could give me a yes or no answer. You are no longer a religion. Do you expect to keep a tax exemption? Certainly. Because we are a way of religiousness, we are not a religion, not an organized religion, but a way of religiousness, a way of life, a way of spirituality. Our whole effort here is to create a school of mystics. This is higher than religion. 
if religion can have tax exempt status we are doubly qualified to have it have you talked to a lawyer about this yes i know i don't need to talk to any lawyer i will talk to the income tax people <laughs> i don't need to talk with liars there is no need i am enough intelligent to prove that the way of spirituality is far higher than an organized religion in fact all organized religions should be taken away their tax exempt status because whatever they have done to the world is simply ugly they have created wars crusades murders burnt living people they have done all the crimes and still they need tax exempt status and we are a commune of meditators and meditation is simply a way of religiousness this religiousness is just like someone has a need to get a few cutaways on his car okay so he's going to be picking and moving his hands he can This is not a religion, but this is far more. It is exactly what religion should have been. The word religion making me centered, alert.
Transfer is made. That's why we actually do it on the next one. Okay. that ever got wrong with her was something with her no. neck. Okay, now what is that proper method of transfer? Um, the person takes the napkin and they hold it out so that their hand isn't kind of grabbing all over the napkin, but their hand is sort of behind the napkin. It does seem very complicated, but it really works. This is to avoid contact with the, rubber, with the latex exactly, cloth? Exactly, exactly. So then the person holds the napkin around the cone, rather like a baby blanket around a baby, and um, proceeds to eat the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and the cone, the glove remains um, pristine. Pristine. Yeah. Um, You're supposed to do this after you wipe the phone afterwards? Okay, let's go see if we can catch this individual. Tom? Oh, you didn't wipe the mouth? Ah, you're right. Oh, no. I am a very bad sannyasin. No, no, no. <laughs> you're not a bad sannyasin at all. What we're noticing is most people don't do it. In fact, m many of the AIDS precautions are being forgotten now. Have you noticed the same thing? I don't know. I just arrived here because I live outside, you know. Uh -huh. So, I mean, sometimes. I didn't. I could not see if the people do this rule or not. I couldn't follow. Them. I arrived last night. You understand? This is. I some of these rules I, is more easy for me to follow. Some I don't know why. <laughs> you know how it is uh -huh. to get together. Do you hate? Do you think the, those rules are really necessary? Do you think there's that much concern or that much danger? I don't know, objectively, I am not very much aware about scientific. You know situation of the heads. What I know that the danger can be so immense that perhaps it's better to be a little bit too much than less. 
still we don't know more how is the situation because in France where I was now the French people have an idea the English people have another and American have another still is not clear about how the microbe they transmit if not or, or yes through the, the saliva or through the you know so for me it's better to do something more than less in a situation like this Great. so I am agree with the situation <laughs> or see some time I go speak out thanks a lot bye now I go thank you <laughs> That one doesn't count, Tom. If we have to tell them to do it. We heard in the discourse uh, was people being told to get back to work. Have you seen signs of people not coming to work or coming in late? Well, I really wasn't at the discourse this morning, so let's. Why don't you tell us a little bit more of what you heard about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in my temple, and not any of my friends. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I don't doubt that it might be happening, but it's not anything I know directly about. Because, uh, in fact, at, at our meeting before we start our worship, we were saying we all feel great, and we all feel really together, and we're all basically on time and doing what we know we need to do. So it's not not what we're doing. Yeah, your impression <laughs> there's a different atmosphere here now. I think the air smells much better than it used. No, <laughs> I don't. I feel sort of that way. Yeah, How and so I think that's only from myself. You know, sort of. What, what signs have changed? What signs? How do you feel? I just feel more relaxed than I ever have, and I don't feel fearful like that I'm going to do anything wrong, or that anybody's going to be really angry at me if I make a mistake. Or I don't know. Maybe that was never the case, but somehow now I just feel. I just feel more relaxed, and I feel excited, and I feel like anything's possible somehow. And before, I didn't feel that way. I felt things were rigid, and and I, it's a, I didn't feel like I could change anything or make too much noise about things that I wanted to see different. And now I feel like I can do whatever I want in terms of making suggestions. And I don't know. How about you? No, I wasn't at this course today. I feel like people now can talk more easily. I find people talk more freely. They can be themselves more than they did before. I feel more comfortable with the way the atmosphere is now. Yeah, that's been in the last three weeks. Yeah, getting more. This, this last week more than even the previous week. It's getting more. Do you work in the same area or the same department? No, I work in the restaurant. Uh, at the restaurant? Yeah. People have not been showing up for work? No, I haven't seen that. However, if he said it, it must be happening somewhere. <laughs> 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 so even though it hasn't been our experience, you're just taking three people in two temples. Obviously, it is happening somewhere. Why would it happen? Well, I think it's... We were used to a much more rigid structure, and now it's much more relaxed. And to find the middle way, sometimes people go really unbalanced. It's, you know, it's like when a child learns to walk. A child is, is not used to walking, and then all of a sudden, it wants to walk all the time. And then somewhere, it finds a middle balance between sitting and walking and standing still. I think that's what's happening here in the commune that we're finding our way to a middle balance. And that may take a little time. And some people maybe need a little bit of a of a a zen stick about it say hey you know you're supposed to be somewhere at a certain time let's do it because people are counting on you and eventually it will happen what i really came here to talk to people about and i'm well, sorry i got lunch. distracted <laughs> was aids precautions we we're down at the uh, the hotel and we see remarkably few of the precautions that were re recommended 
we're getting like this thing. Never see anybody wipe a phone anymore. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. We always do. Uh, yeah. I seem to have found it. Is that, what, is that your experience as well? Do you see the, uh, the, the precautions that were recommended all being observed? In my, well, yeah, where I am. I haven't been to the hotel lately. I don't know what yeah. goes on there. Um, we got a reminder today, didn't we, about mm -hmm. using alcohol in our yeah. hands after we right. use the bathroom, yeah. which I've been doing, so I don't know. There was a notice that was posted on the window down at uh, Rajesh Medical Corporation. Well, in fact, we know all the precautions are under review. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but under review does not mean a direct change right now. It just means it's being looked at again. So until something else happens, most of us are following what the recommendation is. We're still alcoholing things that need to be alcoholed and taking care. Yeah. How about you? Do you find that, uh, do you see that people are observing the... Uh I haven't noticed any change. As far as I can see, people are doing it. Or I speak for myself. What's your experience? Is? Do you, have you noticed that uh, people are less interested in those precautions in the last, say, three weeks? No, I haven't seen any change. From my, I've been observing things as I always have, and the people around me have. You know, alcoholing telephones and anything else they can't speak of. You know, in people's rooms, what they do. But um, no, I don't see any change actually. I think um, overall the community, the major change has been is that uh, people are making decisions from themselves and my hit is that everybody sees that those precautions for now are necessary until we hear otherwise. We were discoursed this morning and for the second day in a row Bhagwan talked about the fact that people are coming to work late, going home early, sometimes not coming in at all. Have you seen that? Um, from where I am, I'm associated with the uh, law firm actually in town, and I haven't seen that at all. In fact, uh, as you know, from the last three weeks, we've been working a uh, double time. So uh, it's probably that certain people are reacting in a, what would be considered a more normal way of, uh, after coming from, as Bhagwan calls it, a fascist regime, um, and not understanding uh, maybe a concept of freedom that they've to react to the way we had been living, their reaction is to do the opposite. And uh, it's like a pendulum. And uh, the feeling I get is that what will happen is people will swing back towards the middle. But what Bhagwan is here for the community is to always remind ourselves of ourselves and to bring us back. And that that swing of the pendulum might be so far that it could be detrimental to the community. So when he says all the things that he says, you take those things that you really feel are he's speaking to yourself. And um, for myself, I've been worshiping, I think, as hard as I have been always. And um, most people, I feel, have been. Uh, his reminders are always well taken. So. The, uh, there was a news conference and there was a question uh, recently about uh, whether or not people believe everything Bhagwan said. Now, as an outsider, of course, I don't. Uh, and uh, historically, I know he gets facts wrong. Right. <laughs> As a former social scientist, that also uh, hits me every once in a while, like the 20% presidents when, you know, knowing it's 10%. But uh, the factual, the, the specific factual things are never the issue. Um, to me also, I can only speak personally, uh, he's always telling us never to believe anything he says, and he said that for years. Uh, there's a, what he does talk to us about is a trust, and that's what comes up, this, this though maybe somebody says something that is factually incorrect. Why is it being said or what's it for? And sometimes incorrect facts or facts that are twisted around a little bit have a more powerful um, reaction or effect for the individual for growth, which is, I guess, ultimately why we're all here. So it's true. In my head, I say, why do you say that there's um, 500,000 this, or why do you say that there's 20% that, and those may be your inaccuracies, but the essence of what he's saying or what he's not saying between his words, that's what uh, seems to be more important for me. You think that's true for most sannyasins? I can't speak for anyone else. I try to, but I have trouble speaking for myself sometimes. Good enough. <laughs> that's, yeah, we got it. Uh, I don't want to spend, I, I don't want to keep worshiping. Well, yeah, they, they, they keep worshipping, uh, but some like to develop now their, um, well, 
music or things in artistry which uh, they haven't done for years and they might overdo it right now a little bit. I mean, we have to keep it together and keep the commune working. And this will, I guess, was a good reminder from him. I mean, he did it yesterday too, and today. So I guess we get it together. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there's a long list of AIDS precautions Bhagwan has talked about too. Uh, have you noticed that those are being forgotten now in the last three weeks? No, I don't think so. No, that's one point that it's still quite solid here. Yeah. At least people are following those. Um, maybe there is less of a fear as opposed to before, because yeah. before there was this uh, horror of uh, being isolated and all that without really knowing what's happening. But now the information is pretty clear, and but still the precautions are, are there. Do you alcohol the phone every time you use it? Yeah, that's sort of become routine now. I mean, to the point that people are carrying when they go off the ranch, they carry their alcohol swabs, and the precaution goes even further than just the commune. How do you spell that? S A L I L A. What's been happening down here? There, there was a, a change in attitude or some a period of time after the, uh, Sheila left where people were doing what? Well, for us farmers down here, we're pretty much involved with the cattle and the cows, and they're pretty much the same. And what needs to happen is the same. And so Bhagwan has suggested that there was, there was a time when people were coming late, leaving early, not showing up? At Rabi, I haven't seen, Rabi is where we have the cows, and I haven't seen very much of that. And I think he was talking more about Sordas, but Sordas is the truck farm. What have you heard is going on there? No, that I don't know, but I have to feel he's more <laughs> talking about that. Oh. I just can tell you from what happens here at Rabi, and that's, nothing has changed very much. Uh, has there been any change in attitudes, or has there been a change in atmosphere that you're aware of on, on the ranch, on the commune? I don't know. I guess you have to ask everybody personally what the change is for them. Personally, and what do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> and I feel relieved in a way. And I really enjoy what I'm doing, and this milking the cows, and I've always been enjoying that. <laughs> Thank you. The possibility of being arrested was in the Bogwan's mind today, and he told his followers this morning he would welcome it. He said he'd committed no crimes and arrest would only show America's hypocrisy. Baguan said that if he's arrested, he could muster some three million protesters worldwide, a million of them sannyasins and two million who sympathize with the Rajneeshi cause. 
Bhagwan says he wants no terrorism and no bombs, but in the event of his arrest, he wants three million people in silent meditation outside American embassies around the world. Ta-da! And now the stand-up. Shall we wait for the truck to go by? <laughs> well, we can. The Bhagwan's claim of a million sannyasins may be a little high. From Europe, Sheila says the actual number is only about 35,000 followers worldwide, and it may only be with the Bhagwan's arrest and subsequent protests that we'll find out which one of them is telling the truth. From Rajneeshpuram, I'm John Tuttle, News 8. Take two. The Bhagwan's claim of a million sannyasins may be a little high. From Europe, Sheila says the actual number is only about 35,000 in his worldwide following. It may only be with Bhagwan's arrest and the subsequent protests that we'll find out which one of them is telling the truth. From Rajneeshpuram, I'm John Tuttle, News 8. Cancel I'm not. No, I, it's not that. It's, it's not that. Before it's, he even said it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I just saw him as a person. I don't know anything about it. Period. So then they said, "Well, I'd like to talk to you about everything and anybody, everything and anything, and who's who and what's what around here." And I said, "Well, that's fine, but I have an appointment with. I have a date with my boyfriend right now. <laughs> Do I have to come in right now? Because they didn't tell me it was an optional thing." The way that they had portrayed it to me was just this, come on in the office right now and have yourself a seat and I'll give you a cup of coffee and we can chat, you know, that kind of a thing. And I didn't have anything to hide, so I felt fine about it. And I just said, well, otherwise I would have gone right then. And I said, well, that might not be very important to me, to you, but to me it's very important to have so a So what date. did they want to ask you about? Though, so then he said, well, why don't we set it up for tomorrow? I said, fine. What time? He said, one o'clock. I was in the hotel that uh, same day, and this woman came up, was standing at the phone, and she was crying. And I said, "Are you okay?" And she was with the medical corporation. She says, "I am. I have always heard about FBI interrogations, but I feel like I've just been raped." And I said, "What's well, the matter? You know, what happened?" And she said, "They were not straight with her. They were really in." Um, not just interrogating her, but intimidating her and harassing her and asking her to say things that didn't have anything to do with the case and really making her feel like a criminal. She said, I am innocent and I walked out of there feeling like I was a criminal myself. And so I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do this interview. So I then uh, talked to legal uh, counsel who weren't lawyers but people who knew. And I said, you know, what, are, what is the situation? I've been, I've been called. I assumed I had to go. He said, you'd be doing them a favor if you want to talk. And I said, well, I don't have anything to hide. I'd, I'd be happy to tell them whatever I know. And they said, fine. Um, what do they want to talk about? And I said, everything and anything, and who's who and what's what. And they said, <laughs> don't be stupid. They have to tell you what subjects ahead of time. And I said, oh, well, they certainly didn't do that. And then I just said, I want to talk to somebody again beforehand. And then I saw another person who said it was just horrendous, the way that they were being treated when they went in. And this is by whom? What's by uh, a specific agency or the crew or what? <coughs> they didn't say. You don't know. It was in the my case, Department. the person who had asked me to talk was the Justice Department. I don't know who the person was that had, was investigating this woman that I had spoken to. Or the, Wait, the U.S. Justice Department. 
U.S. Department of Justice, not, not the state, not, not the, the agency. I don't know. No. He just said to me, I'm with the Justice Department. Whatever that means. <laughs> Have they also been parking something up at the um, police station? I don't know. We could go find out. <laughs> yeah, I'm for taking you right up there. That's yeah. That's the place to look. Oh, I thought there was one of the smoking sports. You ready? Try? There just ain't nobody no, home. Nobody home. I mean, they might be in there, but they're... It's not open. Who's upstairs? There's new security in the fire department. Yeah, it's the morning. Is Barbara here? No, she isn't. She'd be at Naga Juna. She's... Oh, at, at Naga Juna? She's... Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it, have you spoken with it, any of the FBI or other investigators? No, that, are they here today? As far as I know, they are. I don't know. But they're not Naga Juna would be the place to go see. But they're not here in this office? No. Hi. <laughs> Are you done? Well, Excuse me, but Guam indicated that uh, that uh, the investigation that the investigators were no longer getting cooperation. Any any qu any comments would have to be given by my superior because I wouldn't want to give you the improper information. Are you still here investigating? I'm here, yes. Who's your superior? If you talk to uh, uh, Lieutenant Renfro. Is he here? I'm assuming he is. I'm not sure. Could you um, ask I him? I can't give any comments. If I see him, I'll ask him to come yeah, out. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's a great deal of confusion in okay. terms of what the If I see him, I'll ask him to come out. Could. Can you ask him to come out, please? We'll wait. If he's here. Circumstances, uh, given the you know, given the, the, the news conference last night, where Baguan basically said, you know, pack your bags, we're not cooperating anymore. As far as he's concerned, you're not welcome here anymore, and that's that's the reason we're taking unusual unusual steps here because we do want to get that clarified as to whether the investigators are still here and whether you're still getting cooperation. The investigators are still here, and uh, we intend just to proceed on with the investigation. And uh, that's our lawful responsibility. And uh, um, you know, we decide uh, who we want to talk to. And uh, uh, other officials outside the law enforcement uh, field uh, don't really direct uh, or, or are not an influence on who we we do. Sure. We uh, we make that determine determination based upon the investigation. And, uh, interview people accordingly. Um, are you still getting cooperation from uh, the Rajneesh Puram Peace Force? Well, I'm not, uh, not going to comment on that. Uh, I can't really say anything else other than what I've just... That, that indicates, if I'm not mistaken, a difference. I mean, up until eight, up until 8 o'clock last night, all was peace and harmony when talking to either well, you I or don't, I don't notice any uh, difference, uh, and I expect uh, full and complete cooperation until I receive information otherwise. Are you still going to try to talk to Baguan? Well, as, like I said, uh, uh, when the time is opportune and based on other factors in the investigation, we intend to talk to all parties involved. Just in terms of, of police work in general, 
is it ever is it ever acceptable? I mean, ignore this investigation, so you don't have to even refer to this. But is it ever acceptable, from your experience, to have um, a party that you're interviewing videotaping you doing the interview in an investigation? Well, or to have friends present? I'm not. I mean, just in the past. Forget about this case. Well, yeah. I, that that. Uh, tends to enter some sensitive areas right now, and, and I'm not going to discuss it. Do they have the ability to kick you off the ranch right now and make you go get a warrant? Well, there too. I really don't prefer to discuss that. Uh, like I said, we intend to continue the investigation. Uh, From here? Right here and uh, in the same manner that we have. So that's all I have for now. Um, I really. Did everybody leave early last night? It seemed to me. No. Did, uh, did you and Barca agree that you're only going to be holding press conferences at 2:30 every day? Yes. I, the reason for that 2:30 uh, press conference every day is that we've limited now down to one, mm -hmm. once a day. Mm -hmm. we, uh, and uh, that's because of the nature of our releases were primarily the same. There weren't dramatic changes, so mm -hmm. that's why we've limited them. The Has there been a dramatic change in the investigation at this point? I, th I don't think so, not from our perspective. We, we intend just to proceed forward as we have. And nobody's kicked you out of here. We're here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Close. <laughs> Scott Miller from KGW. We've chatted before. Hi, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering if uh, the co level of cooperation, as far as you're concerned, is what it was uh, a week ago. We heard Baguan speak fairly dis disparagingly of the uh, investigators last night. Well, I got here this morning and uh, was met by my uh, tour guide, and I haven't uh, at this point uh, found anything different. I've heard some rumors. I've heard some comments, but uh, until I get back over to the office and until I go back out and continue with the investigation, I, don't, I won't know. Did you hear anything this morning that uh, <coughs> hinted that they would not cooperate any longer or any, anything, any accusations about the way your investigation was going? You mean here in the meeting? Yes, did Bogman say anything about your investigation this morning or the cooperation uh, with it? No. He, uh, strictly uh, discuss the questions that was put to him by the uh, people in the uh, audience. Given your uh, police experience, and we can even forget about this particular investigation, but in your experience, have you ever seen investigators allow somebody to videotape an interview with an investigator during an investigation for their own records? I don't remember any. Uh, and I know what you're talking about, and that is the, uh, it's a legal uh, thing that has came up that uh, created a problem of the uh, law enforcement uh, talking with uh, Bhagwan. Uh, the problem we're having out here that, that everyone should understand is that uh, the commune out here is foreign to us, and us is law enforcement. And law enforcement, in the normal means that we investigate is foreign to the commune and, in, and that's where we're having some problems but 
as these problems are coming up and as we sit down and we discuss these problems, we're l slowly working them out. Uh, I've had some frustrations and I know the commune people have had some frustrations, but we have that in any kind of an investigation. And I think that time will show that uh, uh, we'll resolve the, uh, the uh, accusations out here and we will come to a successful conclusion in uh, bringing the perpetrators, if they're proven to be violators, uh, to court. Bhagwan said last night that the FBI has four times scheduled an interview with him and canceled it. He's saying it's because there's a conspiracy with the FBI to get people here to betray the commune. Can you comment on that? No, there's no conspiracy. Uh, uh, having been in law enforcement as long as I have, uh, the one thing that I've noticed uh, working with the other agencies is we have from my point of view, more cooperation than I've ever seen, and especially considering the, uh, the broad coverage of, of uh, what, what uh, went on here, that, uh, especially in the wiretapping. I don't know if, uh, how many people realize it, but this was probably the largest wiretapping incident in the history of uh, any nation. Uh, You've seen evidence of that, and you're convinced that was going on? Yes. I have. There's no, no doubt about that. I think uh, most of the people in the commune here uh, have seen, even seen that. Uh, do you know why the FBI canceled? Did they, in fact, schedule four times and cancel out, and do you know why? <clears throat> about uh, two or three days ago, we were going to have a meeting, and I think it was, it was I don't remember all the times, it was a 2 o'clock and a 7 o'clock meeting, and the first one was canceled by them. Uh, I personally have asked to have a personal audience with Bhagwan probably at least a half a dozen times in uh, one of my frustrations uh, yesterday or the day before uh, uh, I got upset and said I'd like to see him because I, I felt maybe if he understood what law enforcement uh, role was uh, that maybe he could help us get by some of these obstacles. Also, uh, in hearing him and uh, listening to him what the truth brought out and this, all of these uh, accusations proven and the perpetrators uh, brought to uh, trial, I thought maybe that if I had a direct door to him, uh, not only then would we in law enforcement feel that, uh, that he's sincere and that uh, we're not being blocked, but if, and if we were, he has the authority then to uh, open those doors so that we can continue the investigation. What sort of obstacles are you running into specifically? There's areas that we're not allowed access to, uh, and then by the time we are, a lot of time has uh, gone by. And in the, and I'm sure you all are aware that in the preservation of evidence or in contacting witnesses, uh, you need uh, the time is of the essence. And what sort of areas, for example? Oh, there's been some uh, uh, buildings. Uh, one of my uh, frustrations was officer safety, uh, the area that we're living in. Uh, uh, some things had uh, came to my attention, and so for safety, I wanted uh, some areas checked. And it took me two days to get permission to check the areas for our own safety. And I, I still cannot understand how checking that would have violated anyone's rights. Are you finding a lot of people now refusing to talk? No, the only thing we know is there is a legal defense team of some type and they are passing out forms that advise the people uh, of certain rights which they have and uh, that they sh should seek counsel. I briefly looked at the form but I haven't uh, read it that close. Is there any way that investigators would allow people to, to, to allow the people here at the commune to videotape an investigatory interview with a key player like Baguan in this whole investigation? I can't answer that. Um, <clears throat> the instructions I've had is that uh, if we're going to, to uh, have an interview with Baguan, that uh, we have to follow the guidelines by the U.S. attorney because down the road, if we're going to have a successful prosecution of the perpetrators, 
we must have protected the evidence uh, the way the court uh, demands and and the witnesses uh, statements must be uh, uh, kept in some type of confidentiality uh, everyone has to realize that in a democracy uh, we if someone is accused of something then we have to collect evidence which includes witnesses and then you take that information to a grand jury and the grand jury then said more people and they subpoena him in and then they issue his assist you just don't go out and arrest someone because someone's made an accusation of us and give us the information we need so that we can come to a successful conclusion Andrew, have you have you talked to have you talked to any this is my question have you talked to any sannyasins yet this morning? Uh, just uh, a couple. An interview situation? No. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> come over here and get in. <laughs> this, this young lady is, is my guide this morning. And uh, she met me here, and we have conversed, but there's been no hostility. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, she has been quite helpful. No, I guess what I was wondering is, ha have there been any more ongoing interviews at the ranch house this morning? There, there will be. I haven't been there. I got here at uh, 7.30 and then came on down here. And when I had left 